Welcome to DIYEasyCrafts.com. Today we're going to take a look at using reusable stencils for metal etching. Now this is just an experiment. Anybody that's watched my videos over the years knows that I do a lot of uh, metal etching, mostly on the custom knives that I make. Some of it is pretty detailed, which means that I spend a lot of time weeding out the vinyl, the self-adhesive vinyl, to expose everything that's going to get etched. Today I'm going to experiment uh, with a film stencil uh, from Iconart. And I'm going to put links uh, to everything in the description of the video. But basically, you print out uh, the art that you want to use on a clear film, and uh, you superimpose it uh, or expose it onto the film that's provided in the kit. And that film, after you wash it out, becomes a reusable stencil. I have no idea how this is going to hold up to metal etching. I've already used this stencil before for some wood, uh, actually wood burning craft. It worked out really well for the wood burning. I'm going to use the exact same stencil um, for metal etching, and, and we'll keep our fingers crossed and see how it comes out. I took a piece of uh, AEBL stainless steel that I had laying in the shop. Um, I sanded it with 320 grit paper, uh, cleaned it off with an alcohol wipe uh, just to make sure that this stencil would adhere pretty well. Uh, these stencils are self-adhesive. Uh, but I did mask the whole thing in self-adhesive vinyl, really just to prevent any of the electrolyte solution uh, from getting onto exposed steel. Now, I use um, white wine vinegar and salt um, as my electrolyte solution, and I use just an electroplate uh, coated with gauze, and I use an automotive car battery charger, 12 volts, 2 amps. This is an old style that doesn't have the safety um, breaker in it. Um, that's my power supply. I've got the, uh, the negative attached to the electroplate and the positive attached uh, to the AEBL stainless. And I'm just going to etch for maybe 10 or 15 seconds at a time. I'm going to let it cool a little bit in between. I didn't completely saturate that gauze. I want it to be damp, but I don't really want a tremendous amount of fluid. I'm going to try to prevent any uh, fluid from getting underneath that stencil. And I etched for a total of about a minute and a half. You know that the um, battery charger is working when you see the, the needle you know, on the gauge actually moving. And this does generate quite a bit of heat, so it'll be interesting to see if these little stencils um, hold out. You can see it bubbling away there. One of the main benefits of this is, is not only do you not have to weed vinyl, uh, but theoretically you'll be able to get smaller uh, detail with the stencils. Because even the small pieces will be held on by the mesh uh, that's in place within the stencil. So I just peeled the vinyl. Uh, now I'm going to peel the stencil itself. Most times when I metal etch, uh, it looks pretty funky when you take the, uh, the vinyl off, or, or in this case the stencil off. You really don't know what the stencil is actually going to look at like until you clean it up with a little um, sandpaper. So in this case, I'm going to give it a quick sanding. I think that this was a 400 grit. And actually, I was pretty impressed. Minute and a half of etching. This is a nice deep etch. You can catch your fingernail on it. Um, and I, I'm liking the, all of the detail and all of the small pieces. Look at the lettering. Even the inside of the E and the inside of the A is perfect. Uh, so the next step is I'm going to do this as a full blade etching. I've got uh, some artwork being commissioned. Um, I'm waiting for the graphic artist to finish that up. Uh, so please uh, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and check us out on DIYEasyCrafts.com. Thank you very much for watching.